Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Silent Hunter 5. What? I promised Silent Hunter 4. I did. And I installed the game, played it a little bit, and there were a couple things that caused me to say this isn't going to happen. First and foremost, um... I mean, it's even older than Silent Hunter 4. The interface is a bit more crowded. Um, it looks a little, you know, a little worse. That's to be expected, though. But the biggest reason um, we're not doing a Silent Hunter 3 campaign is the time acceleration in the game only goes up to 1024 times acceleration. No, 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 no. There is no way I'm rolling around the seas uh, that slowly. It's just, it's not going to happen. So... We're back to Silent Hunter 5, and that's okay. Uh, I enjoyed this game a lot more than Silent Hunter 4. I, I, Silent Hunter 4 was good. There were a few things that were great about it, but didn't have the same feel. Silent Hunter 5. So, we're going to be doing a whole a new campaign. Guntram, unfortunately, did die. Uh, a, a slow, horrid, drowning death in the depths of the Indian Ocean. Certainly not a good way to go. So, we're going to be doing a new one. And we're definitely not Oscar and Whittler. We are going to be... Let me load up. Oh, come on. I had it on my phone. And there we go. Wolfram. Kessel Ring. I like that name. That's a good German name. At least it is in my head. So that's that. We are going to be Wolfram Kessel Ring. There we go. Let's accept. We're going to be starting the total Germany, and obviously we're going to be setting that up once we get loaded and in. So we're definitely going to skip the tutorial, and we'll just go through the load screen. Yay, load screens. So, yeah, back to Silent Hunter 5. I'm excited. Um, some things that I'm going to miss from Silent Hunter 4, the uh, auto shooting, the auto aiming, much, much better in Silent Hunter 4, because you just click lock, and you're locked. This way, lining up the numbers, it's going to be frustrating. So I am going to give my tr uh, give a try to the manual targeting when conditions are right for it. So when Caesar come, and I've got relatively a good shot on it, just to start getting a handle for it. But that means we're going to be going back to a difficulty level of 69%, because I'm going to want to be able to turn on the lining up number shooting uh, just because, you know, in some situations, it's going to be necessary. So, yeah. Uh, I did play a little bit of a warm-up game of Silent Hunter 5, just to uh, shake off the rust, if you will. And it went amazingly well. By September 16th, I had sunk 161,000 tons of shipping, which was amazing. Didn't complete a single mission, mind you. So, one of the things we're going to be doing in this series is utilizing the uh, time advancing cheat mod thingy the um basically yeah the the mod that lets you just pick whatever mission you want to start at you can't go back in time but you can go forward in time so the plan is i'm going to be using the missions that are given out by the game as kind of a guideline and uh certainly going to do my best to complete them because that gives us more renown and medals and fun things like that but we're going to be concentrating on just sinking as many ships as we can. And if we need to use that mod to get ourselves to advance further. So we, I mean, because if we don't complete enough missions, we lose the game. And I don't want to go out like that. Wolfram Kessel Ring here. He's not going to be losing because the BDU uh, is displeased with the amount of missions he can get done. So, you know, that's, that's the thing that we're going to be doing. Um, also, we are going to be doing the Mediterranean and Arctic campaigns uh, instead of going west into the Americas. So that's something to look forward to if we make it. Of course, rules apply aside from uh, stupid deaths like running aground or things like that. Um, if we sink, we sink and we got to go back to the start. I think that's the best way to go about doing it. And, you know, no save scumming and it, and it leaves a little bit of a... Uh, on. There we go. A little bit of a je ne sais quoi about the series. Kind of thinking like, oh, we don't want to have to go back. Treat it like a roguelike, if you will. Anyway, 
Uh, one of the first things we're going to need to do is set up our gameplay options. So, obviously, limited compressed air, limited fuel, um, no deck gun projectile path, realistic reload, no stabilize, no damage meters. And that's our 69%, ladies and gentlemen. We're set and ready to go. Apply those changes. Very sure. Thank you very much. Now, if I remember correctly, our mechanic from Brooklyn is going to have nothing to give us. So, let's talk to you, Captain. Welcome Dennis. back, Herr Cologne. What are my mission orders? Come in, Captain. I have just received your orders from Naval High Command. Unfortunately, our situation has just changed for the worse. Have a look at this. Following our invasion of Poland, England and France have now declared war on us. A situation not anticipated by Berlin. This of course means that we are now up against the most powerful fleet in the world, the Royal Navy. An uneven match if ever there was one. The British fleet numbers 255 warships, we merely have 34. Which leaves us with only one hope. Our U-boats. Our enemies have set up a naval blockade which traps our battleships in their ports or forces them into direct confrontation out at sea. A situation that must be avoided at all cost at this moment. Only smaller forces like the submarines can evade this blockade and make for the open sea. We currently possess 46 U-boats. 22 are ready for battle. You will command one of them, Captain. Make good use of her. Strategically, as Commodore Dönitz has explained, our overall objective is to exploit England's dependence on imported goods and strike her without direct confrontation by cutting off all supply lines and starving its people until the King himself begs for mercy. Your goal for now is to attack and inflict as much damage as possible along Britain's main coastal supply routes. Focus your attacks primarily on unescorted convoys and freighters. This will disrupt the enemy's supply lines, slow down their shipyard production, and diminish their overall shipping power. Let's give those Tommies hell. They'll never know what hit them. Good hunting, Captain. All right, well. That seems fairly simple enough. We got our mission set. British coastal waters. Let's uh, get ourselves out. Welcome back, Hector. Let's start the new patrol. All right. Get our periscope down. And it's just like a good old time. So the plan is to hit uh, Scapa Flow as soon as possible. So we're going to head right there and start off the war with a bang. Uh, obviously to do that. New waypoint. Course three five seven. Of course out of Returning here. to here's course. Another new waypoint. Course I miss sixty. Of, um, off speed new ahead. waypoint. Course twenty four. Hunter four. New waypoint. Course that, uh, twenty four. You know, moving around the new map was a bit easier. Course you use thirty the arrow six. Keys. Oh. What have I discovered? Well, it's a bit slow, but new it'll waypoint. work. Course all right, 51. I take that back. I don't miss sound header four at all. <laughs> New waypoint, all right. course eighty. We're good. New We're waypoint, good. course fifty-seven. New good. waypoint, course sixty. And New waypoint, course fifty-nine. Get on out of New here. New waypoint, course three and five seven. And basically head straight for our favorite entrance of Scapa Flow. Right. Uh, New yeah, waypoint, course. Three, right two, in here. Three. There's generally a destroyer patrolling around here. If we can avoid shooting at that destroyer, that would be just great. Uh, if we have to sink it, oh my, we have to sink a destroyer. We will survive somehow, I'm sure. One last thing we're going to do, if I could get my mouse. Slow speed good. ahead. Whoa. Half well, speed then. ahead. Slow, Slow speed ahead. Idea. Yes, sir. How's your family? My wife complains the kids are behaving like rascals. I'm so proud of them. Chips of the old block. <laughs> Man, yes, sir. Peter, I've missed you. And I've missed this. Just walking around the submarine. Ah, oh, feels so good again. All right, we are going to talk to everybody we need to talk Jawohl, to. Kalon. Just War, to get Kalon the morale up. Is a matter of will, not fleet side. Of course it is. Er, bitte? 
Joseph has a wife. Better. Still bad with the. My parents are with her now. I guess there isn't much I could do for her anyway. Ebitte? Pro probably not. I won't use the same joke I did in the first series. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. So, yeah. He's that's fine, Lieutenant. Tough. Um, Herr Kaloin, thanks. He's very honored to serve on such an outstanding ship. Your parents must be proud. They are, Herr Kaloin, especially our mother. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Well, you know, serving on a U boat's pretty cool, too. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Now? I'm doing all right, Captain. No complaints. Thank no, you. No one's picking on you. No, no. Bearing one, well, two. Maybe sometimes. But it's nothing serious, Captain. That's okay. I know what it's like okay, to be young Captain. and on a boat. Not fun. Coming on through, let's talk to Captain Propaganda. Yeah, What's up, sir? You still writing that book? Captain. It keeps me sane. Otherwise, my thoughts would be raging in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not concerning at all to hear about. Thank you. And finally, you wanna try some of this too, Captain? Olaf, what's up? Yeah, but the bosom cut my strings, so that Well, just cut his strings. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, that's the crew of the, 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 the Prometheus. I like the sound of that as a boat name. So that's what we will be known as. We are Captain Wolfram Kesselring of the U-Boat Prometheus. I like it. Half speed ahead. Uh, anyway, we are going to be leaving Kiel Harbor here. Uh, and from what memory serves... Ship sighted bearing one harbor. seven. I think there's a little while to get out of. Um, once we do, we'll be well on our way to Scapa Flow. And um, yeah, hopefully we get a battleship to sink. And start this new campaign off on the right foot. Uh, anyway, we've seen Kiel many a time. And um, this episode's already going pretty long because of the briefing and all. We will, you know, take, take scans of it. At a later date, I'm sure, when I've got things to talk about at the start of the series or whatever, but right now, I'm pretty much all knocked out. So, I'm going to see you guys when I've got something exciting to share. A final waypoint. All right, so we are just coming up into the Scapa Flow area, and there are two other things that I New missed Course from Sound Hunter 5, five, both of which have to do with the fire expression. One, this handy dandy one times button, which is very easy to press even when the game is chugging because of extreme time compression. And two, when you reach your the end of your patrol area, time compression goes back down to one. That's genius. Both things that I really do appreciate. Anyway, we're going to speed time up just to um, get there quicker. But of course, be cautious of that destroyer that's going to be hanging around. Thankfully, we're coming in at night. And it is... Foggy, which is going to be helping us. No doubt about that. Like I say, my goal here is to avoid the enemy destroyer. We don't necessarily want to engage it. That's one torpedo. We are in shallow waters, Captain. But, uh, you know, could be saved for a different target. Maybe some convoys. Maybe the battleship. We'll see, but it looks like we've cleared... New waypoint, course four. New waypoint, course three, five, four. The destroyer location. Escort so sighted. Bearing three, maybe four, not. seven. Um. Oh. No, nope, we should definitely get off the bridge. Periscope depth. And get ourselves under. And let's, let's just enjoy the beauty of this game again. We're watching the Prometheus, Prometheus sink beneath the waves. Slowly but surely, of course, our crew is um, green. You know, it's a, it's a crew of rookies again. We're right back at the start of the war. We've got no renown. And it's just a stock ship with no upgrades. So it's going to take us a little while to get down to periscope depth. Which is a bit of a concern. Uh, we can make out the destroyer. Through the fog. It's a little bit worrying, but I'm sure we'll get under soon enough. And is this thing even moving? Yeah, it is definitely moving. We definitely need to get under quickly. Alright, we are safe. current depth one zero meters. Let's just make sure. Yep. Shut down diesel engines. 
it's definitely shallow, but we should be okay. Let's pop up our periscope and get it in position to just keep an eye on this guy out here. Target marked. We've got a lock, and in fact, it looks like we might even be able to get a shot. So, two, one, close. Why not? We'll see if this is going to be a successful shot. I certainly hope it is. Um, because yeah, if we can, if we can get started with a kill shot on a destroyer, I will be very, very happy, and Wolfram's career will be off to a great start. Perhaps even better than Guntram's. Time will have to tell. Of course, uh, you know, at this stage in Guntram's career, I was also a rookie with this game. So, um, yeah, whoa. We'll just have to see. We can go ahead and drop that down and just follow this in, perhaps? Let's see if we can pick up the wake. There it is, steaming ahead. I'm hoping the crew doesn't see it. The crew of the destroyer, that is. And it doesn't really look like they do. Not seeing any evasive maneuvers, so now it's just a question of whether I got that lineup correct. And, uh, you know, that this torpedo doesn't go under. That would suck. But, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty decent. Torpedo impact! And that is our first kill of the game. Look at that. Let's pull up our um, compass. Ooh, that's going to become Two, handy. one, ready. At some point, we can go ahead surface and surface the boat. Service. This ship is definitely going under, and it's going under quick. Nice big hole in the middle of a destroyer. It's not going to last. Ah, uh, yeah. Look at the beautifulness. Look at the beautifulness of this game. Silent Hunter 5, I've missed you. Anyway, we can uh, get the time acceleration going a little bit. Let's see this guy go under, like so many other destroyers. Each one, in its own special way. <laughs> All right. Let's get ourselves back on the bridge. That should be about it. That's guarding this harbor. We should be pretty clear to just sail on in now that that ship's out of our way. So we'll just hit the map view, speed up, and do some time acceleration. We're going to want to slow down here. I don't think they've had a chance to put up subnets yet. But we are just going to want to make sure, because the last thing we're going to want to do is sail We are in shallow waters, Captain. Would not be fun. We're getting close to the point of being through and in the clear, and we are definitely now in the clear. So we can just speed time up a little Escort bit. Escort sighted. Bearing Ooh. two nine zero. Stationary though, but it is about time we start getting sneaky, sneaky, and getting under. Periscope depth. We'll get back down to periscope depth and uh, drop our engine Zero speed, speed down just a little bit, so we're not kicking out too much noise for these guys to hear us. We definitely Current don't want depth, that. One, and zero meters. of course, um, we take a look in our cheaty view. We don't have a lot of room underneath and you know pretty much the entire harbor is deep enough but there are some locations that can kind of get in the way of any torpedoes you shoot so that's just something to bear in mind let's go ahead and get ourselves into a fairly decent position to at least start taking a look around all stop we're approaching our final waypoint and seeing if we can't locate a target, that's going to be worth our time. Put our periscope on zero so we know we're staring right ahead of us. And take a look and see if anything's going to be popping out. Doesn't really look like it. 
So we've got two locations where big ships generally are. They're generally either up here, or I've had one show up just in the middle. So we're going to drive kind of New this waypoint, direction, course, and uh, we're course. going to leave the periscope up. Half speed ahead. Sighted. Bearing? Two, oh. six, five. Is, you know, a little bit questionable, but it's night, and like I say, this is the start of the war, so <laughs> thankfully we're just out of range. Uh, going at speed three, we should drop Slow speed, speed ahead. And kick up time acceleration, see if we can't pick up any more targets other than that submarine. Submarine? I stand corrected. Other than that destroyer, it's not looking good, if I'm honest. We, uh, we don't have too much out here. But I know there's got to be something here. We've got a report of some big ship there, I'm thinking. So we'll just keep driving forward, see if we can't find anything. And we're picking up sound contacts out there. Ooh, what's this? That is a warship. Pretty much dead ahead. Right there. That's a big looking ship, if I do say so myself. It's about two kilometers out and we are facing its rear. So not necessarily a great location to be launching torpedoes from, but if we can kind of position ourselves New waypoint, course like 23. That, we might be able to get ourselves Ship a good shot. Bearing. Three, zero, five. All right, let's take a look around to see what else we've got. It looks like we got a pretty big tanker and a liner over there. I'm thinking military targets, though, and you can't get much better than a big military target like that. So we're just going to get ourselves Ship sighted, into bearing. a better position. Three, zero, six. And we should... All stop. Oh, I went the wrong way. That's fine. Get it on zero. And there's our target. A nice, juicy battleship. So what we're going to do is set up the salvo, salvo fire. Shooting. And... Um, it is a big old battleship. So there's going to be plenty of armor. Whoops. Uh, kicking around. And we're going to want to kind of place this in a, in a location where we think there's going to be a lot of damage done. And it's got one smokestack kind of close to the bridge. I'm thinking if we aim pretty much for the center, granted, that's going to be where most of the armor is. But I think four torpedoes should be able to punch through and do some serious damage. Two, so let's get one, a salvo loss, fire firing off. Two, two, loss, two, three, loss, two, four, loss. Perfect. And while those are going along, I'm going to see, can we get a good shot? Oops, turn that off. Switching to single tube shooting. Can we get a good shot on Tracking new target. this guy? I think we can. We're going to do kind of the same thing. Aim for the smokestack. Two, five, loss. And let loose with our rear-facing torpedo. And now, let's see if we can pop out and enjoy some fireworks. They should be coming in on the battleship <laughs> right now. Any second now. We should get a nice barrage of explosions going on. Oh, we can see, and there's the wake of the torpedoes. Coming in, a little bit off target. Torpedo impact. Picky about things. And that was one. Torpedo impact. Two. Torpedo three. impact. Torpedo impact. Four torpedo impacts. All relatively close in time to each other. And this ship is now... Four holes, so we were able to punch through the armor in four places. I like that. It's definitely on fire. Two, are definitely one, gonna be ready. Pretty rough for this guy. 
but I don't know if it's quite a kill shot. We might have to lose a couple more into it just to make sure it sinks. In the meantime, we've got our rear-facing tube coming in slowly but surely on this guy. And uh, hopefully it's a kill shot with one. Although, kind of a big ship. I'm not sure that we'll be pulling off a kill with this. But uh, it's still more damage done to the Royal Navy. It's still an, an entire oil tanker with at the very least a giant hole in it. If not, you know, internal systems damage and stuff that's going to take a lot of time to repair. So, yeah. Oh, here, here it comes. Coming in. Nice. Direct and torpedo impact. Good hit. But like I say, I don't think it's a kill shot. Should be a nice big hole. And we probably could have put it a little bit deeper. But, um, you know, lesson learned. Let's take a look at this. You know, there's a potential that this sucker is just going to sink. So, I don't know if we need to fire another torpedo at it. It's looking like she might be pretty dead. Uh, that is something I want to make sure of, of course. I don't want to just leave this guy listing in the harbor, not sunk, but... Tube two, ready. I don't know. Tube three, ready. Something tells me... Tube four, ready. Something tells me that this ship is going to need a little bit more of encouragement to sink. Let's just check our torpedo loadout. Yeah, we can get... Hopefully one more will end this ship. If we put it sort of up in the front, there should be an entire... Well, in the back, because that section's already looking pretty underwater. Firing tube one. We'll get one more out there. Hopefully that'll be enough to sink this guy, and then we can still have four torpedoes for use uh, convoy hunting on the way out because we're, we're going to need to do that. Two, one, dude. ready. Get ourselves some... Torpedo impact. Sunk. Well, it was a torpedo impact. But I don't think it actually hit the ship. So... Hmm. I definitely don't want to just leave this guy. I want to make sure he goes under. I don't think he's getting any deeper. All right. Um, Firing to what? Hope this is going to be the last one. Oh. Is my torpedo going completely? Yeah. Do you know why? Target marked. Because I got the other ship targeted. That would do it. Firing tube. Two. That is an embarrassing rookie mistake. Premature but... detonation. Oh come on! Are you kidding me? Premature detonation? Where we hit two, something? Three. Los. Come on. This should be. This should be good. I hope. Don't blow up early. Coming in nice. Coming in strong. Torpedo impact. Coming in dead. Yes. All right. Excellent. That's all I wanted out of this location. We can go ahead. New waypoint. And course three, get actually. Five, four. Well, Returning I'll to have an dead. escort down there. This might be our best way out. No, because this is going to be our best way out. We know where New the ships point. are, Course and we've already two, sunk an escort five, out seven. there, so we should be safe to get out of the harbor this way. And unfortunately, we've um, only got one torpedo left, thanks to my genius skills of not being able to target things properly. But that's okay. Once we get out of the harbor, we're on shallow waters, Captain. Okay, so we're gonna want to cut our speed. Slow speed ahead, and then just escort side. Just sneak out. That's all we need to do. Just sneak on out. 
And once we clear here, bearing four five, we're safe to go Surface ahead and rise ourselves up. And I think we're good to get out of the harbor. We're up on the surface. We can definitely get our periscope down now. Not needed to be up. We're gonna have to remember to uh, always drop that down. And um, yeah, I think we're in the clear. So next up, we are just gonna head down to the British Coastal Waters location. See if we can't find ourselves some ships to sink. Uh, in the meantime, we've already got 32,000 tons sunk with uh, that destroyer and that, uh, what was it, Queen Elizabeth class battleship. Not bad if I do say so myself. Anyway, I'm going to see you guys uh, hopefully when we pick up a cargo freighter convoy. See you in a bit. Alright guys, well, it's just a single freighter. It's not a convoy. But, I think it's still good. It's about three kilometers out. And, uh, we got Max firing on the deck gun. But, I don't think we want that bad. It doesn't really matter. Uh, how far is this guy About three kilometers? Yes, so we can grab that down to the there. And so the bigger the ship, uh, the better it is to sink. That's, that's Wolfram's motto anyway. I wonder how long it's going to take for me to uh, start coming in better. It's probably going to be around us. It's how long I think I went. It was something before, before I got this out of the side. So, we'll see. We'll see how long I can. Shells falling well on it. I don't know how we got adjusted. Not all ahead of the ship. But we did. Like explosion. Firing those high explosive shells, obviously. And that's the best way to cause freighters to sink early. And we probably could close range with this guy. And not start shooting three kilometers out. But. This is a Q-ship, and the way I think about things is that is manned by a bunch of Marines. It's going to be pretty tough for them to get a handle on firing three kilometers out. And it was far enough distance that a little for gun crew can probably hit the target. But civilians? Oh, yeah, I don't know about civilians. They're probably going to miss more shots than hit. In my head, anyway, it just makes sense. Besides, it's pretty easy to put these big freighters in the same here. Going slow. Granted, we're not going all that slow. It's a little bit unstable. But that's okay. Anyway, I don't think we can do the ship that's going to be 
blasted from the bottom. Anyway, oh, look at that nice explorer. Look at that. I guess I could probably just head over there and cheat me and let uh, Max finish off the frame. Certainly, it's got enough high explosive rounds. And that this isn't necessarily the most efficient way to do as a freighter. But, you know, it's just an extra story of this But yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Max should keep the shooting up. I hope. Yep, he will. Check out the damage. This ship, I think, is pretty safely destined for the bottom. Have we got much damage below the waterline? Not really. We got a few holes that are like half. One big one there. It certainly seems like Max is doing his good, his good work hitting the ship. It's just a matter now of it. Succumbing to its injuries. Anytime. That's gotta be a kill shot, right? No. A lot of explosions going on. This one's gotten close to that. Sink, sink, sink. Oh, come on, Max. You can aim better than that. Anytime. There we go. Destined for the bottom. What was it, you may ask? It was. No, that's the A-Class Destroyer. Let's scroll this down. A Simmering Class Tanker. 7,000 tons. Set to head to the bottom. Well, we seem to be off to a pretty good start. Rest easy, my Simmering friend. Rest easy. Well, that takes care of that. And, um, I'm fairly confident we should have a good amount of renown. But I'd like to get just a little bit more. Did that actually count? It did not. But that's okay. That's just fine. Um, is there a way to see how much renown I actually have? Because there's, there's, you know, up upgrades I want. A specific upgrade the uh, hydrophone that goes in 360 and we could do to get um, some more torpedoes as well but we would have to end the patrol so we'd have to go all the way back to keel i think what we'll do is head to this wonderful island that i always have problems pronouncing new waypoint course 16. heli go land that's gotta be it h-e-l-i heli go land heli go land anyway we're going to head there, resupply, and then probably call this episode. So, um, let's set course and get over there, shall we? As quick as you can. And so as you can see with this, this time acceleration going at 3,000, and just the speed at which you're traversing the area, uh, Silent Hunter 3, this is as fast as you can go. And it's, you know, basically the same area, so, yeah. This is why we're not doing Silent Hunter 3, because there would be a lot of off-camera time where I'm just sitting here doing this. And that's not fun. For me, and it would, it would, I know for a fact, transfer over into the quality of the series. So we might as well keep it where I can at least, you know, enjoy myself and um, enjoy the game. And despite all its flaws, I've really, really missed Silent Hunter 5. So it's nice to be back. In command of a U-boat I can walk around in with, you know, crew that aren't smoking weed all day and then just staring at me or hollowing out their eyes 
with spoons, presumably because rations are tasting too much like diesel fuel. I'm not sure. Two, three. Not necessarily saying that people in Silent Hunter 4 ate their eyes because their rations were nasty, but I might be implying it. So we got a full load of torpedoes back. Our aft tube is reloading. As you can see, we've got no external reserves, no rear reserves or anything. Um, things are going to be, you know, back to, back to basics for the crew of Prometheus, or the Prometheus, and their glorious captain, Captain Wolfram Kesselring. Anyway, guys, we are going to leave the episode there for today. We got a first patrol. We're going to save over that. Um, I've cleared out most of the saves. Guntram will always live on, though, because he's got my keel save, so I don't ever have to do the, um, oh, what's the word? The tutorial again. So let's go ahead and exit. It's, um, you know, roughly the 15th of September, and we've already sunk basically 40,000 tons of cargo. Correction, 40,000 tons of shipping. I think things are going pretty well. Hope you guys are going to be enjoying the new series as well. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this first episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching.